What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. It's the People's Champ here. <laughs> um, last time uh, I talked about this car a couple videos ago, um, I was having some issues with it starting to run hot. So uh, I came to the conclusion that it was a stuck closed thermostat. And it had the symptoms of a stuck closed thermostat. One side of the radiator was hot, the other side was cold. Felt like the coolant just wasn't flowing through. So um, as I had the car apart, you know, getting it ready for Southern Fresh, I also changed the thermostat. I even drilled a little weep hole in the top of the thermostat. That's what I, um, a few of the race car guys told me that was a good trick that a lot of people use. And that way it helps it bleed easier and stuff. And just in case it does st get stuck again, some coolant goes through it. So I did that and um, I thought that, was, thought that was the issue. So I drove it to Southern Fresh, which is like an hour drive. Perfectly fine. Kept temperature the whole way. And uh, even when I got to Southern Fresh, since it was a car show, there was a little bit of traffic getting in. So sat in traffic for maybe 20, 30 minutes and still, even still sitting still, temperature stayed right there in the middle. So um, everything was good. On the way home, started the climb. So I got maybe, maybe halfway, maybe a little bit less than halfway and I started to see the temperatures climb. So I pulled off on the side of the road and I just kind of let it sit because I didn't want to, you know, overheat it. So sat there for a little while. And then since I was on the side of the highway, not a good spot to really sit. So to strategize, I had to get it off the highway and then figure out where I was going to do, you know, get it towed, you know, pick it up later, you know, whatever I had to do. But when I started it up, you know, I put my hand over the heater and I felt cold air. So, you know, that's usually sense of an air pocket. So I drove it, you know, to get off the highway. As I started driving it, I got hot air and the temperature went right back to the middle. So I'm like, okay. So um, I kept going. So I pretty much made it home. On my way home, it, you know, it started to go this way a little bit. I felt the air and it would get cold and then it would get hot and then it'd come back this way. There's a lot of wind right now really crazy it's like 40 50 mile per hour winds outside i don't know what's going on in georgia but um that's crazy but those were you know those were symptoms of air pockets so i think it wasn't the thermostat i think this thing is just not bled right now when i did put the thermostat in there i did bleed it the best way i could i even had the expansion take up in the air above the engine and i thought i bled it right but still having a little bit of problems so so a couple of days ago, I used Charles. That's my coolant pressure tester. I don't know where the name Charles came from. It just popped up in my head. But I put him on top of the radiator and I pumped up the pressure. And when I got to 10 PSI, the top radiator hose started hissing. So it wasn't really on there that well. So uh, I tightened that down and then I pumped it up to like 15 PSI. When I got to 15 PSI, I saw a leak from the bottom radiator hose. So going from 10 to 15 there was already leaks so i'm like okay this i think the i think the max pressure of a e36 cooling system gets to 30 psi but i think it averages around 20 so it wasn't even at full temperature or full pressure as it would be at full temperature and it was already you know had holes and it was leaking so i tightened both of them now and i actually pumped it up to 20 last night and i let it sit for like an hour and a half two hours and it you know came down from like 20 to like 17 it dropped a couple psi but nothing major so i think we're good now so um i think i fixed the leak but still since this um since i don't want to deal with air pockets anymore because i need to drive this car to riverside in a few weeks which is like three three hour drive three and a half hours i need to make sure everything is good so i'm actually going to go to global right now and i'm going to get a vacuum vacuum bleed they have a vacuum bleeder where, I don't, know, I don't know how it works, but it basically, it just makes sure you have zero air pockets whatsoever in the cooling system. So I'm going to go do that. I'm about to head to Global. Should be fine to make it there. It's not far from me. And then I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know what's going on from there. All right, I just made it up here to Global. Um, got here, no problems. But um, that, that drive's only like a 10 minute for me. So, but uh, had, um, I bled it this morning and I had heat coming through the heater. So there's no air pockets right now. Could be some air pockets somewhere circling in there, but I haven't you know, seen any yet. So got here, no problem, but uh, we're gonna use the vacuum bleeder and that way get rid of the air pockets completely and hopefully never have this problem again. So um, he's gonna finish up some jobs over there 
he's working on some other stuff and then after that we're gonna get started but um yeah i'm also selling some shirts still i still got a little bit of shirts left i only have small and extra large left sold all the mediums and the largest um, I think I so I think I have like total maybe eight or nine shirts left. Remember I started with fifty, so did pretty good. So um, yeah, so um, they'll be online. I'm working on online. When I get them online, I'll make another set, another batch, and then we'll start going from other designs from there. But I'm working on it. But you know, like I said, I'm doing everything on my own, so it takes time especially when I have a full-time job and a family. So when I get a little bit of time here and there, I devote it to that, so. But I'll holler at y'all in a minute. All right, Adam, how does this vacuum bleeder work? Oh, no, one moment. I'm gonna actually pressurize it first, just to be on the safe side. All right. I just wanna make sure we got some things. Well, I like to get it right to 15. Right there at the tip of the fucking thing. <laughs> to the thing. Yeah, I had it at 20 last night for a while. 20 yeah. is literally, you don't want to go that far. That's like literally the, the engine is overheating and you're like, holy fuck, what's going on? <laughs> so we like to go, you see how it's in the red in the 20s. Uh -huh. You definitely want to go at 15. It's just the... Uh, Normal going rate, and it looks like holding pressure, but I do like to go up with the car and visually inspect everything just to be on the safe side, especially underneath this cocksucking manifold. Yeah, I know. Yeah, all that stuff under there is new because I did not want to go under there. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> So we decided not to use the vacuum bleeder. Um, so far, everything's good. Um, I, I think really what it was is I fixed those leaks last night. So um, now that those leaks are fixed, the hoses are retightened. It's kind of holding temperature again. So um, holding temperature, coolant's not doing anything crazy. So it should be good. We're still gonna you know keep on the, with the bleeding process and then um, I guess just keep up to date with it and see what happens. So it has been idling for about 30 minutes now. It's holding temperature. The fan is coming on and going off. So it's definitely retaining temperature. Um, I think it really was just those loose hoses. Like, um, like I said, I've been driving the car for six months, never had any running hot issues, especially with everything on the cooling system being brand new. Um, and I think it was just those hoses came loose and I didn't realize it. So when those hoses came loose, I thought it was the thermostat, changed the thermostat. And then even after changing the thermostat, still have the same symptoms. So I think it was just those hoses loose and I didn't realize it. So I probably just fixed the car myself, brought it up here anyways, and they're going over it now. And you know, everything seems to be perfectly fine. So um, I think it's good. So I'm gonna drive it, obviously. I'm gonna drive it today. I'm gonna drive it tomorrow. I'm gonna drive it a lot. I'm try probably bring it to work. I wanna make sure I can drive this car three and a half hours to um, Riverside, drive it around Riverside, and then drive it back to Riverside. So or back from Riverside, so I want to make sure everything's good, so I think we're good. assume the car is okay now at least for the time being and um yeah i'm just gonna just gonna have fun and drive it and um if it starts to run hot again and then it starts to run hot again like i don't really i don't really know what to do so um i guess time will tell i really don't think it's a head gasket i mean i know that was like a strong suspicion but i think if it was a head gasket i think it was within that hour of it sitting there idling that um something definitely would have changed but um i don't think it did so 
What's going on guys is actually another day um a few days have been passed now and i actually wanted to make another outro because um i can give you guys some more information now so um i drove it all day saturday right and then i parked it and then sunday morning i went and checked the coolant level to see if it was maybe a little bit lower after i found some more air pockets and everything was actually right there where i wanted it like you know on a factory uh expansion tank there has a cold line right there about 70 percent of the way up the top and that's exactly where it was. I put a flashlight in there and it was like sitting right there at that line. So, well, it wasn't a line in there, but you know, about 70% full, which is exactly where I wanted it. So that's a good thing. So I drove it again on Sunday, parked it, left it overnight, checked it on Monday, again, right where the level was. So I think that really was the issue. Just um, the hoses were loose. So moral of the story, get yourself a coolant pressure checker because that actually um found my leak because those leaks are kind of hard to find if the car is running like i said when i got the 10 psi the first time the top hose was hissing i wouldn't hear that if the car is on and the bottom hose that started leaking at 15. again if the car is on and it's up to temperature i'm not going to be under the car so this is stuff i wouldn't have noticed so this is like a good way to pretty much uh, simulate your car being at temperature. And that's how um, I was able to find those leaks. And um, now that I got those leaks fixed, I think the coolant system is actually doing good. So I changed something else also. Um, this could be good, could be bad, I guess we'll see. But um, I'm trying to base it off the factory one. Now this is good. This is, you know, if you get a good condition, a new one, then these will actually last a very long time. Think about all the ones that, yeah, they do get old, they do crack, but that's usually after like over a hundred thousand miles. So, I mean, they are pretty good if you think about it. So, um, since that one is the aluminum one, and a lot of people say they have problems with the aluminum one, um, the only difference between this and the aluminum one is the aluminum one actually has a uh, bleed valve, not a bleed valve, a, uh, overflow, vi overflow hose. That's what I'm trying to say. It has an overflow hose right there at the top. It just kind of comes out and just kind of points down to the ground. That way, if it does get too much pressure, it kind of overflows and spills out. Now, I think that might be causing some issues also. I think a lot of people have already said they don't like this thing. And that's why now I'm going to try to plug it. So I actually put a plug over it. So it basically no longer has an overflow hose that could be good could be bad but if again on the factory one this does not have an overflow hose so i'm trying to basically mimic the aluminum expansion take to act like an oem so without that maybe it will work better also because i mean i know it is a turbo car a lot of cars when they're turbo tub, turboed and they you know get in boost they kind of push coolant out um, I had this uh, block on for the past two days and hit boost and, you know, I was expecting if it was pushing coolant or pushing air into the system or whatever, then it would be overflowed. And when I open it, it would be too full or it would be higher than the previous level. But no, it stayed exactly the same. So maybe it just really doesn't need an overflow hose. So maybe the overflow hose is causing that thing to have problems and I try to keep it like OEM. So. I'm going to leave it without that for a while and see if maybe everything's okay. Maybe you don't need the overflow hose. So that is where I'm at right now. Also found another problem. I have not had power steering in a long time. Um, this car has not had power steering in the last like six years or so because I hit something in the road and it broke the hose at the bottom and then um, it just kind of bled out and then the pump seized because it was dry. So um, I don't want that issue to happen again. and when we were at the shop, started looking around for leaks because every time I fill it up, the next day it's empty and I cannot find out where the leaks are coming from. And then finally he pulled the curtain back on the uh, tie rods and it's coming directly from the steering rack. So the steering rack is leaking. So right now I have no power steering. So I actually threw a smaller belt in. Um, I had a smaller belt from before when my power steering pump seized up. I kept the smaller belt. Here's the part number if you want to get a smaller belt. That way I can still run the bolt belt like in the factory rotation. It just skips the power steering pump altogether. So that way I'm not burning that out at all. So power steering pump is just basically sitting there like dead weight right now until I change the power steering rack and then, um, you know, then I could try to get power steering again. So right now I don't have power steering, but 
other than that it's fine so cooling is good now i'm going to keep driving it of course but as of right now everything seems fine everything seems perfect and that's a good thing so um the only thing i need to fix now is power steering and i'll probably do that later not in a rush i can drive without power steering it's harder but i'm kind of, I'm kind of strong so Anyways, that's all I got right now. So I um, just wanted to get you guys a better update instead of me just going home and just saying I hope everything works. No, I want to show you everything that um, it is kind of working. So um, that's all I got. Deuces. I will see you in the next one.